Is my machine very loud? No. A little Slightly. Bit. I don't think you should be using it during oh, the stream. Oh, <laughs> All right. Yes, <laughs> oh, inside this. No. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to episode 132 of the Coscast. I am, as always, your main host, Pixie Does Cosplay. And with me, I have my two co hosts. And about the cosplay. And then you have the cosplay. Welcome, ladies. And we're also joined tonight by our extra special guest, Robin Coutinho. Welcome. Hi! 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 So, the main theme for today is an interview with our lovely guest, but we before we get there, we're going to go into our usual segments, which is, of course, cosplay progress first. So, have we been working on anything cosplay-related during the past week? Yes. Yeah! Actually. Yay! The answer is finally yes, after a cosplay <laughs> drought of months. Yeah, we had a uh, stream yesterday, a uh, craft stream, which... I found very, very, very helpful at least. And I finished my buttercup dress for our Powerpuff Girls group that we're going to do um, next weekend. Oh, excellent. Yes. Yeah, I've also, uh, I mean, I joined the live stream yesterday, obviously, and started making my bubbles. Uh, she's not done yet. I'm now uh, attaching the um, stuff, this, this stuff to the, the edge of the skirt right now. Mm. Mm. You had some uh, sewing machine issues yesterday, didn't you? Oh my god, yes. I was so frustrated. I wanted... Yeah. I mean, I did hit my machine. Yeah, I, I heard you. It was rather loud. I thought you broke it at one point. I wish, kind of wish I did, and I'm glad I didn't. So. <laughs> wow. It's, it's uh, trying to act up now as well, because it Apparently, just wants to eat my fabric. <laughs> and uh, I like I, I like my buttercup dress. Uh, there's a few things that I would have done differently if I. It's like, you know what? I don't care. It's fine. It can look a little bit like. Eh. It's, it's, it's homemade, you know? I'm not going to use it for any competitions. I'm not going to use it for anything major like that. And it looks nice the way it is. So I I didn't... Um, I was too lazy to kind of double in the fabric. So the edges are not that nice, but they're nice enough. Well, as long as you're happy and as long as it's wearable, that's what matters. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think the the overall look of us three together will just cancel out any faults. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I realized that with our link group. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw us walking around Banzaicon, but there we were so jacked up. Or Suniva and Tonya were jacked up links because they had like <laughs> been part of a challenge where people were supposed to turn them into a red and blue link using only t-shirts and duct tape and um ice All cream right. sticks and things oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but people were like oh my god that's so cool you guys are link All of you. Can we take pictures of you and we were like uh are you sure are you wanna <laughs> this is a hot mess no, so it was really fun yeah <laughs> So, so but basically, if people see you in a group, they're very eager to forgive all of the little mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think this, yeah, the same thing applies to beauty. <laughs> I, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> no, but it's, I think it's actually scientifically proven that if there are a number of semi-pretty girls or boys collected in a group, they look more attractive than they would alone. Oh. Mm. I, th I've, I have heard that as well mm. and yeah, I try right. to yeah. I, and I try to apply it to my work so it's like if I'm gonna have like a take photos of my things I will put all the pretty things together in a little pile <laughs> and then it just looks more exciting yeah. <laughs> and that's why all the k-pop boy bands are many <laughs> oh. Oh. that's Ooh. why now we know that's the secret <laughs> Well done, Korea. Science. <laughs> That's great. I will never go anywhere alone from now on. I will always have a group with me. <laughs> just, just hire a posse to walk next yeah, to Yeah, an entourage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I started working on some things yesterday too for my um, Valeth cosplay for from our Fatal Fumble um, Dragon Age podcast thing. 
Uh, so I've made, like, the velvet dress that goes underneath her tunic thing. And I decided that the tunic needs to be lined. So right now I'm just going FML. Why am I doing this to myself? Because <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this lining. I've been, I'm like, I'm in my sleep. I'm thinking about how I'm going <laughs> to do this thing. And I still don't know. <laughs> so the struggle is real. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, have you been crafting anything lately? Uh, doesn't have um, to be cosplay related. Uh, I have. Well, I haven't been crafting any co anything cosplay related. But if I was, I would probably be making uh, tacos from Adventure Zone because I'm on a big Adventure Zone kick lately, and I just want to like be part of a group. <laughs> Uh, some someday maybe for my next con. Oh, that would be amazing. Um, and uh, uh, with other craft things, yes, I've been crafting. Uh, well, planchettes today. or working on a few a few orders that I've got going, but I'm gonna try to get out uh, tomorrow if I can. Um, so I'm just trying to finish things up. Mm. Cool. Your planchettes are so gorgeous. Like... Yeah, I have one Thank right you. here. <laughs> Oh, I... <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh yeah! Oh hey, it's that one. <laughs> you I know that one. All her stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, of course, it's like her kids. She yeah. knows every one of them. Yeah, that's cool. It's so beautiful. I really love it. I I don't have any Oita board to go with it though, but you know. Yeah, I I think not a lot of um i don't know if everyone who buys one from me has an ouija board or ever attend intends to play with it but i think you know some people just will just get them because they're quite pretty Dude, uh, they are, they're gorgeous <laughs> like i do they intend are. to play around with a ouija board but i still want one <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very relevant for me because i have another hobby which is ghost hunting so i actually uh go out yes. and try to find ghosts so, <laughs> oh my goodness! So it's very relevant, but I've never, uh, uh, never, uh. never played with an Ouija board. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> to bring one on your ghost hunting adventures. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> one day. Would Would you? Would you? Or um. Um. Uh... <laughs> maybe the thing is like uh to us. It's more about just putting up a camera and using microphones and things to try to find it or document mm. it as good as possible. Mm. And we don't tend to bring in um, religion yes. or the occult or belief oh, sure. systems in any way. So that would have been That's if it fair. was all right for the people who own the place or if someone just wanted to do it, that would be something completely different. But yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah. But it's cool. I would love to try it. I I, I would. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, the next segment uh, on my list is news from the geek and cosplay community. Uh, so the first thing is an announcement. It's some self promotion, uh, and it's <laughs> that we and our uh, Dragon Age podcast, Fateful Fumble, are going to Tudacon this year. Yay! Uh, yay! I'm so excited. I'm so hyped. Hashtag living yes. the hype. Uh, so we're going to have a Coscast talk show and game show on Sunday. And on Saturday, we are having a live one-shot Dungeons & Dragons gaming session from 6 o'clock until we're done, basically. Because mm -hmm. Turecon told us, you guys can keep it going until 11 if you want to. Wow. Oh my god. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if people want us to go at it that long, if if we can actually manage that, maybe we will. But uh, mm -hmm. at least we know we don't have to rush it. We can just finish everything, and it's it's going to be fun. So we hope that uh, as many people as possible come to see us. Yeah, and the audience might be able to influence what happens. Yes, that too. Mm. We're planning to incorporate that into the show, so anyone who joins us will actually have some say in what we do at least i'm open for meta so <laughs> <laughs> uh also uh the next piece of news is that bonsai con tickets are available now so mm -hmm. if you want to go to bonsai, bonsai con this year you should grab them because in the past they have sold out really really fast 
And I don't know if that's going to be the case this year or not, since they are a bit bigger than they were before. But the art uh, stand passes are they're already sold out. gone. Yeah. yeah. They were sold out like the first 30 minutes, I think, almost. Yeah. It it went really fast. Like that. Yep. Yes. Uh let's see. Uh the next piece of news on my thing is that there's this hilarious boot like Ad Avengers thing going around. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm not planning to because I'm not seeing anything oh, no, from it's not Marvel a movie. Studios. It's like it's no, like no, no. figurines that are like based on Avengers but aren't like, you know, like Chinese cheap knockoffs but not really. <laughs> They're a joke that someone I haven't has seen produced. It. But but what I was supposed to say was that I I uh now since I haven't seen the last Avengers movie, I'm not looking at anything that says anything about Avengers, <laughs> just in case of spoilers. <laughs> That's why I haven't seen them. No. no, but this is kind of hilarious. They're they're called the Revengers, Endless oh. Tussle, <laughs> instead of Infinity War. <laughs> and it's, uh, I'm screen sharing it uh, with our audience. So you have the incredible fella, which is the Hulk <laughs> in, well, a very different version. Uh, you have Fedora Ron, but you only get the fedora, you don't get Ron. He's not included <laughs> in the package. There's Token Girl, just because you always need one girl, at least. <laughs> the Nightly Knight, who comes with his own sleeping bag. Oh, and that's cool. <laughs> And Regular Raccoon, which is just a raccoon. <laughs> Trash Panda. And I just, I thought this was hilarious when I found it, so I just wanted to share it, because someone made this as a spoof. Just, yeah, just for cool. fun. And I like it. Mm -hmm. You can also get uh, something called Detective Horse, which is a horse smoking a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Detective Horse, yes. The, 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 the well known Avenger. Marvel character. <laughs> I, I really enjoy the um, uh, commercial on the side there <laughs> on your browser. Uh, oh yeah, the healthcare boxers. Yeah, I don't know why they popped up there. No. <laughs> but very pretty. Let's let's just not press any buttons, okay? <laughs> no, no. Um, I also stumbled upon something called um, Universal FanCon, which was supposed to be hosted in the state, which was supposed to be a convention for uh, marginalized people, uh, people of color. Uh, women and people who are of an LGBTQ persuasion, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It was supposed to be like an open con where everyone was supposed to feel safe and welcome. That was kickstarted and completely backed. They had like over $60,000 and then all of a sudden it got cancelled and no one knows where the money went. And people huh. are oh. feeling super betrayed. Oh. Oh, uh, damn. So, so yeah, there's an article about it uh, on uh, theroot.com and there's a link to the article on our Facebook page in the news post for this week if people are interested and want to learn more about this. Um, I thought it was really sad. I mean, I have no relation to Universal Fan Con or whatever, but I thought it was, sounded like a really good idea and I'm really sad that people have mismanaged the money and that it's not going to happen and didn't even make a, an attempt to, to to, just do something. They mm. just cancelled, which means people aren't going to get their money back. Mm. Well, that's, that's very... It's, it's not... It's, it's, it's just sad. If, if it, this was a planned scam, it's just sad that some people uh, do that. It, yeah. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. <laughs> no, the, the, the weird thing was that apparently it was planned by people who are pretty big in the community, like um, a, a woman that started a site called Nerdy Black Girls or Geeky Black Girls. I haven't been to the site before. Um, so she's like, she's created this site. Um, yeah. And she's pre apparently a big like person in the community. And <laughs> yeah. So. Let's just hope for a uh, reason to come soon. Uh, things can happen, and if this was recent, maybe they haven't kind of gathered all their information yet to write a proper article. So let's just mm. cross our fingers that it's not any foul play, and yeah. that people will get their money back. Hopefully, or hopefully, yeah. But something positive did come out of the whole thing, like um, parts of the community 
uh, got involved and set up like a virtual artist alley for all of the artists who had bought booths at the convention. So they could like uh, promote their stuff and sell their stuff in like a digital artist alley version of it. Uh, yeah. So and and there were some other things that have been done by other uh, community personas mm -hmm. to to just try to make it a little bit better. Yeah. So so at least that's good. At least something I mean, came out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, sometimes it's like uh, maybe. Uh, well, I don't know anything about the situation but perhaps uh the people involved like setting up your first convention is like a whole a, like a big a big job yeah. so maybe they weren't prepared for like all of the um like the span of of, of yeah. work and logistics that go into that and you know some stuff kind of didn't yeah, Didn't I mean, we shouldn't judge be, without knowing what actually has been going on. Maybe they just didn't know what they were doing, or maybe they trusted the wrong people, or maybe it just got too big for them. We don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also included an article about um, Anime Matsuri that was recently held in Houston. So if you want to see some cool pictures of cosplay from that event, you can also click into our Facebook and find the link to um to it there mm -hmm. and also so i found something today in oslo at house of nerds they've opened a new attraction i guess you could say called yeah. play pulse uh basically it's ergonomic bikes hooked up <laughs> to a special game which means that you can exercise while gaming <laughs> and this is like an effort they're making to try to to you know help people who who don't enjoy exercising and maybe <laughs> don't really feel comfortable at a gym actually be able to work out like, <laughs> gamers in general yeah gamers in general <laughs> so when you pedal this bike the faster you pedal the faster your tank moves in game oh. and, and then you have like uh buttons that m allows you to like um steer it from side to side and stuff <laughs> So, yeah. so yeah, you're really motivated to stay on that bike and pedal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Sounds so much fun. It, it does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I really want to try this. So, you know, House of Nerds, if you guys are watching, you know, we'll, we'll, come. we'll, we'll, we'll try come. it. We'll, we'll film ourselves <laughs> making asses of ourselves on these bikes. Yeah, yeah we'll sure. make a vlog. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, I just want to talk about one thing that are kind of uh, it's not really news and there's not really any reason for me to talk about it but it's sort of in the cosplay community and uh, I just saw that Jessica Nikri uh, recently posted a photo of herself without any makeup because that's been a huge insecurity for her like forever and she wrote a really nice text about it like how insecure she really is about herself and her body and and the feeling of never being enough and the feeling of never you know feeling yourself is enough um and and i just find it nice when people you kind of look up to also show their flaws uh or, or show that they're human because it's easier to relate and easier to understand that maybe these people aren't inhuman after all they're actually <laughs> normal people <laughs> yeah, so, yeah i mean i i appreciate that i appreciate anything that has to do with like body positivity or self positivity so i can only applaud her for that mm. for sure um but yeah. i have i haven't seen the post in question so you'll you'll have to send it to me afterwards so i can read it yeah i think it might have been a mainly on Twitter, but I think it was something on Instagram as well. Yeah, I'll find it. Just remind yep. me. <laughs> I'll probably forget. I'll find <laughs> so it. So ditzy. Uh, let's see now. Yes. Uh, so before we get into our interview portion, I thought we would share some just pictures that Gavin has been kind enough to send us. Yay! Yeah, yeah. some of the things he makes. So uh, here we go. The first picture up are some beautiful moth planchettes with moonstone, I believe. Uh, opalite. Opalite. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. They're it's, so pretty. 
It's the it's the cheaper version of Minstone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but I would love to work with like more precious gems if I could get my hands on them. <laughs> no, it's it's expensive. I understand that. That's... <laughs> but opalite is just as pretty. I have. To it's say. very pretty. I'm very addicted to using it. <laughs> yeah, I want I want RPG dice in opalite. Or... Oh God, yeah. That would be. Mm. Let's see. Oh, Maybe... they are so pretty. I wish I could have like a necklace. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm planning a, a, I'm planning a necklace version uh, because lots of people have been requesting it. Um, but yeah, it always takes me some time to get around to doing like a, a new design from scratch. Um, I, I bet it's time consuming. Yeah, it's, yeah, it can it can be. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so gonna buy it. <laughs> <laughs> the next one are some very colorful uh, resin bird skulls. These are beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I'm getting more into colors. Um, like I try to stick to a theme, um, but like if you talk to any artist who runs like a handmade business, like they will probably tell you how difficult it is to like stick to one thing in one style mm. because we're so creative and we just want to do everything. Um, <laughs> Hashtag every so, cosplayer I know ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm I'm playing around a bit more with with color, even though I wanna I try to stick to like the more gothic, gothicy themes and, and yeah. <laughs> but it's nice with some variation. Yeah. Like, I remember you brought like a resin crystal with like you know uh, red swirls that looked like blood. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, I really want to get that. But then Ihadra cosplay bought it before me. So I was like, no, oh. it's gone. <laughs> Damn it. Fudge. <laughs> so I've but, been thinking about it on and off ever since. Like, God damn it. Oh. I wish I had it. <laughs> Maybe I'll make more. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least I just want to say one thing about these skulls, though, because you say that you enjoy most making things gothic y. Mm -hmm. These are pastel goth, so <laughs> it's kind yeah. of goth. So yeah, it still works. It still yeah. works. <laughs> Just I've always me. been, I've always been had like a, a weak spot for like the pastel aesthetic, even though it's not like reflected in anything that I wear, and you couldn't tell. Um, but you know, whenever I sometimes look at you know cute, cutesy pastel things, I go like inside <laughs> yeah i can totally get it. i mean it's almost like being a, a crow or, or a shadow <laughs> because you you look quite plain and boring but you love them shinies yeah <laughs> reflected in my my logo <laughs> and my name <laughs> yeah no i'm kind of like that too i don't i rarely wear pastels or pink or anything like that but i can still look at you know pictures or things that are that aesthetic and go like oh that's that's gorgeous <laughs> that gives me diabetes yeah, yeah. <laughs> enjoying looking at it <laughs> Let's see. next one here is like a work in progress of uh, one of your moth planchettes your paint yeah paint. or it's a, it's a filigree yeah planchette yeah i just want to include one where it's like bit more of the process from mm. when I first start doing a design I do play um and then I and then I work on the clay version until I'm happy with it and then I make uh, a mold from the clay version and then I cast copies in like a harder uh, material like resin um, yeah, I... yeah and that's that's my approach to most of the things that I make yeah I mean, like, there's something that is just so satisfying with watching your demolding videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it's it's odd because um, demolding videos are like all the rage on Instagram right now. Um, it seems because it's like, and it makes sense because for someone who does like sculpting and molding and casting, that's always the most satisfying progress to for for the creator to do when you when you peel it out and then you know you got it so it makes sense for it to be the most popular videos on um, 
on like a visual site like Instagram as well mm. uh, because then you get to share that that like magical moment with everyone else and it's yeah people really enjoy it so oh. I try to so I try to include include as much of that stuff as possible recently. Yeah. I ho really do hope that next time you come to a Norwegian uh, convention and I'll be there too. I hope you get. To, I want to buy all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have a fan girl, or you have, you have three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think uh, let's just move into the interview section of uh, of this uh, episode. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. who wants to start? Oh, I'm, I got to before you do that. I yeah. got to apologize because I just realized that my my cable for my Mac is downstairs and it's going to run out of battery. So if I just run down and crash, that is completely OK. Oh, you run and I get it. So I'm prepared. No I'm so problem. sorry. It, it is fine. Okay. <laughs> decide, it. decide on the question in the meantime. Yes, we will. <laughs> oh, well, that happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we've been through worse. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the our craft stream yesterday, for example, a good yeah. example of shit. Oh, or, or when we uh, were playing Fateful fumble and uh Suneva's computer blue screened oh yeah that was ho oh that was stressful so stressful <laughs> so uh tonya do you want to start or Suneva, sure. you... yeah okay then tanya you get to ask the first questions yeah. oh. <coughs> so sorry <sighs> it's okay oh yeah. I there wish I had my my mannequin had bigger boobs, <laughs> so it would be more like you. Um, yeah, I came, yeah. I came back to an interesting <laughs> scene. <Yeah. laughs> That's what happens when we're unsupervised. <laughs> can't take you guys anywhere. No, nope. no. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm ready. Yes, good. Good, good. So. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do? Yes, I can. Um, okay. Well, my name is Ram. Um, I moved from Stavanger to London uh, about six years ago to study. Um, because basically, um, it's always always been into like crafting and cosplaying and kind of making stuff. And then I managed to find a degree um, over here uh, that basically lets you get into a lot of like um, like making, but on a more professional basis. Um, so it had a lot to do with like yeah, learning how to work with sculpting and molding, and casting, and lots of lots of different materials like wood and metal and fabrication and puppets and replicas and all of that kind of stuff, which sounded so incredible to me that like, I could still sort of do cosplay and props, but as like a career um, or as a, as an education. Um, so I came over here to do that and um, finished my degree. Um, and now I am working Kind of freelancing, uh, kind of, but mostly living off of my Etsy shop and uh, producing content for the internet and um, yeah, making a living off of that stuff. Wow. And uh, yeah. Cece says in the chat, ooh, exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, you kind of answered the second question, but maybe uh, could, yes. it's fine it's fine it doesn't yeah, yeah. Uh, but um what type what school did you go to um so the school i went to is called wimbledon college of art um and it's part of the university of the arts london sort of collective of, of universities um and my degree was called technical arts and special effects um where you yeah you get to kind of learn of a, a variety of different skills um 
and what they really sort of the aim for you to to go for after college is a bit more into like movies like the movie industry sort of doing being like a prop maker and working on sets and and like being in also doing sort of like commercialized props and window displays and just or or um, even doing like prosthetic makeup um there's like a, a number of different directions you can go and you kind of get a little bit of everything um through the course nice yeah how mm -hmm. many years did you go uh three, three. it's a it's a bachelor's cool mm -hmm. Ah, oh, I'm a, makes me excited. Yeah, <laughs> makes me want to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's all move to London. Yeah, let's just decide to re-educate ourselves and become London-based. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, the rent is so expensive. Yeah, Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but where can people find you online? Um, well, you can find me on my Instagram, where I'm the most active at um, Instagram, at Raven Coutinho. Um, that's, yeah, R-A-V-N-C-O-T-I-N-O. Um, and then I, I sort of I sort of have a portfolio page um, that's called like Raven Coutinho SFX.com, where if anyone goes there, it's kind of, I haven't updated it in a while, um, but it's got, most of the stuff that I've been doing at uni and we got a bit of my sort of bigger special effects projects and there's some cosplay on there too because I I had to I used that to like get into the school I was like look I can make cool stuff yeah um, that's cool. there are like I, I'm not the only cosplayer who's like attracted to that course like there's a there's a number of other ones <laughs> who do it every year yeah I don't I, doubt it yeah, yeah I don't doubt it either uh, <laughs> CC Tori is asking, do you recommend studying in London? Um, yes, I, I do. Uh, I would recommend it. Um, just be prepared to spend a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, like the, the experience is great. Uh, it's absolutely worth it. But yeah, it is very, it is very, very expensive. Um, just because tuition because as a as a Norwegian national, you're kind of you or um, oh, well, I guess actually England's not going to be part of the EU now either. But how it's been is that like if you're in the e EU, you pay like the same amount that uh, the British students pay. But since Norway's out of that, then you're paying much more. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, <laughs> and crazy. and if you're if you're doing anything that's like like my kind of course, you are also pay for, um, you've got to kind of get all of the materials and tools um, that you use for your course on top of that, which adds up and then rent is completely wild. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, so just, you know, as long as you're prepared for that, you won't get disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very great. It's, um, it's, it's a good, yeah, it's a good time to study over here, though. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, on to another subject, or it's the same subject, so mm. it's you, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> uh, how do you come up with your concepts and ideas? Um, oh, uh, that's, a, that's a little bit of a hard one, because I wish I had I wish I had a really like intellectual deep answer <laughs> to give uh, where I'm like, yes, no, these, these, these designs came to me in a dream, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or something, or something really smart that's like, oh, this, this represents how people like me are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, most of the things I do, it's like, I, it's just because I, I personally think they look cool <laughs> and um, it's a combination of me like just liking a certain aesthetic um, and um, and also wanting to experiment I guess um, because like I'm like I like moths I want to make a moth 
uh, moths are cool. Uh, I really like, I'm, I'm very simple. I like swirly pretty things. So I put swirly pretty things on everything. Uh, I <laughs> and, support um, this. Yeah. <laughs> um, yep. or, I, or, or I'll just kind of like read or see someone else try, like do a sculpting technique and go like, oh, I want to try that. Or, ooh, or someone who's like maybe playing around with it with an effect in resin. Um, I, I follow, yeah, one of the things I do is that I follow a lot of artists. Uh, who kind of work with just sort of all, all kinds of different things. Um, and sometimes when I see something do something cool, then I'm like, oh, wow, I wonder if I could do that, but like as a planchette, or if I could do that effect, but in a skull, like, and then I go try it and then, you know, <clears throat> it will either, oh, sorry. <clears throat> and then it will either look really cool or it will look kind of eh. Um, but a lot of it just kind of stems from my curiosity to just um, ex like experiment and try new things out. Um, and then I have to sometimes curb that desire with the with my other desire, which is like making money and making a living. Uh, because sometimes I'm like, oh, what if I made this thing and it would be absolutely wild and just I want to make it just because uh, I'm interested in seeing it but then I'm like but would anyone want that will I just be wasting my time and money if I do this so it's a little bit of a of a balance to find sometimes it's like yeah. I need to kind of find out what works for me and also what can like you know help me make a living mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, that's, and that's uh, the honest truth <laughs> yeah uh, I have one additional question to this one though and that is yes. why did you start making planchettes Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, it just, the idea just kind of came to me um, when I was like, it, the idea just came to me out of the blue, I think. Um, yeah. I, uh, oh no, actually, I do remember. Uh, I think I came, I was looking at, uh, through Etsy, because I uh, look through like, um, yeah, because sometimes it's, it's cool to just browse. Um, I browse other artists a lot and, you know, see what they do. And there's, some, uh, there's someone on, who I follow on Instagram who does really cool like stained glass um, like designs, like stained glass window pieces. And, uh, and, and she works with, she makes really, really pretty things for his name. <clears throat> is I think it's Wicked Stained Glass Designs. And she made planchettes, um, but she cuts them out of glass and like puts them together. And I thought it was really cool. And I'm like, I wonder if I could like, if I could make a planchette. And then suddenly I'm like, oh yeah, no, I could that really easily because it would be flat, it would be not too hard to cast. I could, I could use those things those little glass beads that I have as a window <clears throat> and I could give it use these other beads that I have to give it legs and I just really wanted to try it out <clears throat> and um and I did and it became like pretty popular right away yeah um and I just had so much fun with it um that I I kept doing it um yeah uh, so yeah I guess I saw someone else do it <laughs> and then I kind of wanted to you know, uh, try my my take on it. I, I yeah. think that's how a lot of artists get inspired to do new things. It's just by looking at other people and what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But making it your own. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, but, but it's like that you pick inspiration from different things, even if it's like abstract or very in your face, <laughs> you still find inspiration in everything. And it's not about copying. It's not a, that at all. It's just that everyone who's creative, uh, they, they want to share what's inside mm -hmm. their heads. And everything that exists, I think, is kind of based on inspiration from other places. Yeah, absolutely true. And actually, uh, this might be like a little bit controversial, but I don't think copying is necessarily that bad. No. Um, I, I think it's like, uh, or, you know, that's very, um, it's, it's up to either artist, but like if someone, I think if like, if someone copies 
what I make, then it's like, I, I, I think it's, it, I mean, it's kind of cool. Um, and it's, you know, to have inspired that. Yeah. Um, and there's like a part of me that wants to be like scared, you know, that's like, oh, what if someone copies me and then, you know, they're gonna take all my custom maps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I won't make a living. Um, but I think that like, it's gonna be fine. You know, like it, it, even if someone does it, then it's like, I, that doesn't mean that like everyone who likes me will just, and my work will just suddenly stop, you know, no. it just means that there, there's more cool things out in the world. Yeah. Um, and that's also why I've like, you know, I'm starting to like, I want to launch a, a line of like my own molds so that I'm like, Hey, here's how you can copy me. Like completely uh but also like i can get some 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 uh, monetary compensation yeah. for it <laughs> yeah, i think sense? that's a pretty good idea honestly <laughs> um I, i'll just say that yeah. i don't i think copying isn't necessarily bad it depends on how it's done and mm. copying is not the same as stealing and stealing no. is not okay but copying yeah. is in a lot of ways a form of a compliment or mm. and so, a lot of times it won't hurt you yeah. Mm. Besides, there's already a market for you know selling mold, finished molds, so people mm. can do it themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm excited to see, and and that's something I've been very excited about it, and that surprised me that like I'm I'm excited to see what other people can do, and it feels like with you know molds that I sell, and then it kind of feels like I'm collaborating with someone. Mm. You know, yeah. that it's like, hey, we're doing this collaboration together. I can't wait to see, like, how you will do this. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. I mean, so, I'm, I'm, so I'm exploring that. I mean, this oh. question isn't on the sheet, but we talked a little bit about it before we started the episode. Mm. And that was kind of the whole, like, what's it like to run a small business and to gain mm. traction on social media and all of these things and, like, you said that you you might, might might want to talk a little bit about that too. Um, it's it's a it's a learning process. Um, it's like it's um, yeah. It, it's it's been like a, a learning process that I'm still you know keep, I keep learning from. Um, and it took me. I I opened my shop two years ago um and um it took me about half a year until i kind of started making enough from it to like be any kind of sustainable um and kind of uh, that i could cover cover my my rent uh like not anything else but just kind of rent with it um so just just learning from that and stepping it up and trying to improve and trying out like lots of different things um it's it's hard sometimes <laughs> yeah. um but but it's going all right and um i want to keep i want to always keep stepping it up and like see where i can go i guess yeah, yeah. i i really enjoy your stuff like uh sometimes when you follow people uh who do different kind of things uh they kind of merge and you don't necessarily know how to place them in different kind of you know you don't always remember who's who but mm -hmm. i can always tell what stuff is your stuff when i'm looking oh, through instagram nice. i'm like oh yeah you know <laughs> uh, because you have this really distinctive style oh, and, you. and your brand is so powerful and cool so i have no doubts in my heart that you will make it yeah Thank you so much. That's nice to hear. You're um, very awesome. Oh, um, <laughs> it's it's interesting with style because, like, I didn't plan to, you know, develop any of my stuff into the style that I'm currently having. You know, uh, the stuff that I made, like when I first started, and everything that was in my shop then was kind of very different and a bit more basic and not as refined um but you know and then um, i just kind of 
yeah develop the style that I have right now just by like constantly constantly doing it um and I am just trying to allow it to go where I'd like it to go I guess or to what feels feels cool I guess <laughs> yeah. um yeah that's nice all right uh, yeah. but how is your practical process from idea to finished product um i will um well if i have a new design in mind um i don't usually do any sketching i just kind of get right to it and um and uh and start sculpting like a base and then I try to add the elements that I want to have like on say if I'm doing a planchette um I will have like a number of different elements that I'd li like to try to fit into the small space of the planchette yeah. and then um, make them go nicely together and then I just sort of work on it and refine it and maybe add or take things away um and then I will build a wall around it, um, like a mold wall to contain the silicon that I pour, um, which I get. I get um, a silicon that's like in two parts, uh, part A and part B, and you mix up uh, the liquids in equal amounts, and you mix them together, and then you pour them to like make the mold. Um, and since yeah, I work with a silicon that usually sets very fast. So just like 10 minutes after I got 15, I can take it off and it will be ready. Um, and then I can, if I want to, I can start casting just right there and then. Um, cool. I mean, usually I, I won't do all of that in one go. Like if I'm sculpting, I might, you know, spend the day doing that. But um, yeah, that's, that's like the process. I guess, and then I will cast copies in resin, um, and then I will sand those copies, uh, which is the my least favorite part. Is always the sanding. Uh, I am sure cosplayers can relate. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, especially bad for me because it's like I don't have a I don't have really have a proper workspace for sanding. So I take my my pieces and I go across the road. To the parking lot of the company across the road and I like hide away in the parking lot and sand <laughs> <laughs> and then I like shuffle back into my, my home and like hope no one like saw me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bad thing about this is that people who see you actually think you're doing something shady but you're yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But see even professionals have to make do with you know their <laughs> own you know jerry rigged solutions yeah oh yeah uh, yeah yep <laughs> I, I just i find that very enjoyable i i, I yeah. do i'm like picturing you in a parking lot <laughs> just like standing for your life <laughs> yeah just dodging out the way of yeah. the security cameras <laughs> i was like i once had to like do it and um, I, I had to like sand in the rain and I didn't want to sit on the floor. So I took like a, a stool, like a chair with me <laughs> and just like had a little setup in the rain. Probably looks really weird to any, to any passersby. You should get a tent, a sanding tent. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if, if someone wanted to get into resin casting, uh, mm. what kind of materials would they need uh, and where would they be able to get them? Um, right, okay. So if they're only interested in doing the casting themselves um, and playing around with and get kind of like a handle on resin, there are so many molds that you can, like silicon molds and plastic molds that you can just buy online, uh, like on eBay or AliExpress or, um, or even in like a, like a household store, you know, in the bakery section, like there's, there's like silicon molds for like, 
uh, sweets and stuff like that and chocolate making yeah um, so you can you can just get um you get a simple silicon mold um for pretty cheap um and um well the other things you would need you would need some um, plastic cups some mixing cups uh some mixing sticks uh like like tongue depressors um or um yeah any other sort of mixing implement um some gloves very important always wear wear plastic gloves or like nitrile gloves or latex um and uh, depending on what kind of resin you're casting with i would say well with most of them you're gonna need like a fume respirator yeah um, and like there are resins that are very like low or non-toxic but they're uh, kind of expensive uh but you can get them uh i've been all of the clear resin casts that i've been working with recently i've been trying out art resin which is like a a American brand, I think, uh, which is um, like, yeah, they claim they're, you know, completely non-toxic and you can work with it without a mask, without wearing a mask. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, if you were, if, if you've never worked with resin before, that would be a good alternative um, to do something that's like, yeah, just, you know, not, not very toxic because you've got to take all these precautions um yeah there's there's a lot of different brands uh of resin and silicons um and if you haven't you know worked with any of it before it can be like a little bit overwhelming when you try to start figuring out what to get yeah um, but yeah so i would recommend if you haven't ever before like you can find yeah like a an epoxy based um clear resin um like a jewelry type resin would probably be the best to start out with yeah and uh, yeah yeah it's like cc tori is saying it's a long process <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like i think if, if i were to do it i think that i would have to kind of work my inventory up i wouldn't be able to just get everything I would have needed yeah. at one at once it, it would have been like a build-up pros process that would happen after a while or something like I don't feel ready <laughs> yet but <laughs> <laughs> I mean there are you know um even with the with the epoxy resin and jewelry resin there are there are you know little kits that you can get that are just like two little bottles of resin that you mix up equally just in a cup with a stick and and um yeah it, you, you should be fine uh, i know but i know that like resin can be a little bit daunting to if you've never worked with it before like i've, I've been there as well yeah mm -hmm. yep um all right next question um do you cosplay i do <laughs> not as much as i would like to <laughs> um, um but what kind of characters do you enjoy cosplaying Ah, um, oh my God, it's, it's been so long since I've like cosplayed on a regular basis. Back when I, back when I lived in Norway, I would cosplay all the time and I would go to all of the conventions a year. Um, but since I moved here and started studying, it's like, well, I've been super busy studying and also, well, you know, what makes what used to make cosplay so so special to me was like you know the Norwegian cosplay community as well because yeah. everyone's so everyone's so great and lovely, um, so yeah so that just kind of made it made me do it less. Yeah. Um, okay, but what kind of characters? Uh, I would usually do kind of um, characters with some sort of armor, uh, some sort of fancy, impressive ar armor that I could make, uh, or if they had like a really sick looking prop, um, I would be all over that because I love props. Um, 
but like <laughs> recently I've been more into just kind of uh yeah not doing that kind of thing but just doing more like fancy fabric maybe like le something layered fabric type um something that's easy to pack in like a suitcase because I would be flying <laughs> because I would go to Norwegian cons and I would be flying across yeah yeah um, I, yeah. I, I think I remember that you were going to cosplay um, Quoth. Oh, Quoth? yes. Um, I did I did for a little bit, I think, at Bon yeah, for at Bonsai Con. Mm. Um, I didn't complete it though, because I didn't have my I didn't have a loot. <laughs> oh yeah, you need that. <laughs> but maybe someday. Someday. But I think as a cosplayer, it's important to, you know, plan how to travel with your things, because yeah. <laughs> if you don't, well, <laughs> you, yeah. you might not be able to bring your two meter long sword with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Tonya, we're I looking don't... at you. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I value yeah. comfort more. Yeah recent like over over like impressive looks these days i'm like as long as i can be comfortable yeah <laughs> and not have yeah. bits poking me everywhere <laughs> yeah for sure yeah but, breach <laughs> um but you have one of your cosplay looks on your uh, web page that you talked about earlier oh. or yeah. is it someone yeah uh, there's, there's an armor there uh yeah. i had to go in and, and have a sneak peek the big and one, yeah, yeah. It looks very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, it's my my cosplay highlight, probably. <laughs> <Cool>. <clears throat> um. Ah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but what are your favorite fandoms? Um. <clears throat> I'm well. I think I'm, yeah, I mentioned. Uh, I'm I'm very much like a, in adventure zone land. <laughs> yes. With my brain right now, I listen to like just a lot of podcasts, um, and and that's that makes me very excited. Um, I hear good things about Critical Role, um, so maybe I should get into that one. Yeah, and if you really like, you know, fantasy uh, podcast, you should mm. definitely check out Fateful Fumble. <laughs> Wow, shameless. Yeah. shameless. <laughs> I have no shame. No, no clearly not. It's, it's basically our. Yeah. Podcast. I think she's no, heard, I heard it. I think I mentioned one. it like four times today. Yeah. So, <laughs> not very discreet or anything. No. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. No, no, I will. But if you like my page, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but w will you be attending any Norwegian conventions this year? Um, maybe I would like to. Uh, it depends on what I can like afford. Um, yeah. So I'm still kind of in the planning phase. I'm also moving this summer, like from one one edge of London to another. Oh. So I've got like all of that to think about. Um, yeah. Um, but I, I, I do hope so. Uh, it would be pretty sweet. Yeah, it would be, be nice great. to see you. It would be very nice, and I could buy another planchette. <laughs> Start a collection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, okay, but we have a one question that we're going to ask you. <laughs> I don't know. And it <laughs> <laughs> this question we ask everyone who comes to this show and it was originally uh posted of one of our followers uh and friends called sample cosplay so i just have to give a shout out to her <clears throat> the question goes as followed uh if you were a fruit or a vegetable what would you be and why oh boy <laughs> oh boy i didn't have time to think about it's this. a hard one it is so hard Oh. oh man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would say I'm going to like lie awake at night thinking about that. Oh no. <laughs> well, with, 
What would I be? What would I be? What's the right one? The vegetable chooses the wizard. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, damn. Uh, <laughs> I, can I just give a shout out to my favorite, but no, favorite fruit yeah. and yeah. vegetable? Of course. <laughs> Yes. Okay, right. So my favorite fruit is mango. Yay! <laughs> mango because... sisters. <laughs> because they're the best. And well, my favorite vegetable is probably avocado because I'm a filthy millennial. Um... <laughs> <Avocados> <laughs> and I would have it with every though, so. and I would have it with every meal. So mm. well, we're all millennials here. You're in a safe space. It's fine. We're all special <laughs> snowflakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? yeah yeah uh our generation is is the millennials Tonya, unfortunately so we can't say those damn millennials it's us <laughs> Wait. we're part of it yeah when when do you have to be born to be a millennial um in like the uh the 80s i 80, thought it 80s, was only early the early 90s who were I thought there were only the kids who were born like in 2000. No, no. We, no, we, we reached adulthood around, you know, or you no, know, teenage years around, you know, the 2000s. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like CC Tori says in the chat, I'm not a millennial. No, <laughs> no she's, she's not. not. <laughs> she's too young for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she just turned 18. No, part. she's saying, I'm not a millennial. Damn, millennial. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> uh, but but I like the avocado answer. That was very, uh, it, it was it was profound and, and good. It's a nice, nice answer. I like the mango too, but like, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it was a good answer. It made us laugh. That it, it's legit. It's better than mine. Mine isn't that interesting. I I just said strawberry. I think mine oh, changes every time. Strawberries are so good. Yeah. Though. Yes. Because I'm small and I'm kind of sweet, but I can also be kind of tangy, <laughs> I guess, or sour. So. Yeah. Some strawberries can be bitter. Yeah. Or yeah, what? Well, sour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Almost bitter. Yeah, if you eat a bitter one, it's old. Yeah, I'm the sour little lady brigade. <laughs> <laughs> All on my own. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that was uh, the last question. And we're not even just, well, we're a teeny tiny bit over time, but it's two yeah. minutes. So it almost doesn't count. Oh, which, great. So we did a good job today. We're always awesome. Over time. <laughs> we're always over time. <laughs> always. Um, so, uh, we're going to round off the show, uh, by going through our geekery section, uh, where we basically, have we read, watched, listened to, or played anything, uh, during the past week that we would like to recommend to our viewers or that our viewers would like to recommend to us? Yes. In fact, uh, I have been watching more, um, Korean dramas. <laughs> Uh, this is a new one because I've finished. Uh, uh, oh, what's its face? Ah, whatever. Uh, it's a new one, <laughs> and it it seems kind of silly at first, especially the first episode. It's super silly. I mean, I'm sure you would uh, you know feel better about your driving Anita by watching it because you know. Okay. Good. By the first uh, episode. But uh, the thing is that uh, I feel that this series really explores uh, several mental issues that people may experience and stuff. And, you know, different types of uh, personal issues and personalities. And, you know. Uh, but it's in kind of a funny twist sometimes. Okay. And, and, and sometimes quite serious, of course. I have no idea what this show is about. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's about uh, five girls living together in a collective and just, you know, trying to live. All right. All right. And then they have issues <laughs> in every one of them uh, and experiences and stuff. Uh, and, and they're very sweet, sweet. Uh, it, the, the show is called Hello, My Twenties. Yeah, cool. They're gone. <laughs> yeah, 
But I really recommend it because it's, it, I mean, they have obviously long episodes. They're like an hour long, as Koreans like to do. But I really enjoy it. Enjoyed it. Hmm, I'm cool. Uh, the only weird thing, though, is that it starts at season two. Huh. Huh. So right. that's that's weird, but you know it's fine. <laughs> then season one must have been really bad. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's my guess. Yeah, and it's on Netflix. Like that. Yeah. Hmm? I... It's on oh. Netflix. Oh, okay. Cool. Nice. Now I'm done. Now you're right. done. Um, I have watched Rogue One. No, yeah, Rogue One for the first time this week, and mm. to be yeah. honest, uh, because. I don't watch movies at the cinema, and I watch them whenever I feel like watching them. I don't like to feel pressured, so that's why I watch movies like five years after they come out. Um, <laughs> it's not that bad. No, it's like a year and a half, but still. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed Rogue One. It was a really great Star Wars movie, and it didn't feel. Uh, it didn't really feel like Star Wars, but still was. And I just enjoyed that they didn't try to make it cool. Kind of. It just was. Mm -hmm. That I liked. It wasn't trying too hard, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, uh, I enjoyed that the actors weren't uh, typical Hollywood actors. I enjoyed that very much. Um, it just felt real, but still high production. Mm. And I liked it. Mm. Um, I haven't watched that much other stuff. Okay, I have one thing that I'm... No, I'm not embarrassed, because I'm not embarrassed by anything. But I'm on a huge Dr. Phil uh, <laughs> role right now. I'm watching so much Dr. Phil and just, like, looking into people's problems. It's... It's... Uh, it, trashy tv at its best <laughs> and i just have it on in the background while studying for my exam <laughs> mm. so yeah yeah it's just an easy thing to put on in the background I, that you don't really have to pay super attention to yeah if, if it's something really interesting that i have to follow then i'll just forget to study so uh -huh. yeah yeah well i've tried watching dr phil it wasn't really for me. Oh, I love Dr. Phil. He's so <laughs> sassy. Uh, I love Judge Judy. I really like Judge Judy. She's fun. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I like that too, but I get so frustrated for all the stupid people. Oh, yeah, there are a lot of them, <laughs> for sure. Um, I don't know. Um, I saw that uh, my dad wrote a porno, has released a new episode, which is a best of book three uh, episode. <laughs> So I'm going to listen to that because I, I just love that podcast so much. I fell out, <laughs> off uh, in the middle of season two. Yeah. This, there were some pretty disturbing scenes up in there, but <laughs> I, I still, I'm still paying attention, still following. Yeah. <laughs> Currently on podcast front, I'm really into um, Someone Knows Something, mm. uh, which is a really great podcast. Uh, it's this... Um, a uh, documentary journalist guy who works in a, for, for a radio station. He just finds cold cases and one season is about one case. He just tries to follow up leads, talk to people who knows, maybe know something. And uh, there's mm -hmm. a new new case every season and, and, and oh, it's cool. currently three seasons. It's really, really good. And if you like true crime and stuff, you should listen to someone knows something. Yeah. I might like that, and I might even recommend it to my mom because she's all about true crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really, I'm, I really like um, true crime. I'll, I've also been listening to the newest stuff uh, by the Adventure Zone, of course. Uh, oh, the new, the new arcs. Yeah, the new arcs. And I have to say that I really enjoyed the Amnesty one, which is the one that they're going ahead with, which is going mm -hmm. to be a regular show. So, oh, cool. yes. yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, it was it was really good. And <laughs> Griffin is of course the dungeon or the, or the game master in this one as well. And yeah. he's, he's just just doing such a good job of like yeah. telling the story and setting the like the mood. The tone, yeah. yeah, it's just really good. So 
Good. I haven't listened to the the, the latest one, but I'm going to get on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I'm also a little bit behind, but um, I'm, I'm, I think I am in the amnesty thing now. Can I say, can I say something yes. random? Yes. Tra- like, I love random stuff. <laughs> well, it's got to do with it, I guess. Um, uh, Travis McElroy actually bought something from my Etsy shop. <gasps> what? Like, that is so cool. Like one just, just like a month or two ago what it was completely out of the blue completely random like his name just pops up on my order list and i'm like haha funny funny joke someone <laughs> just put you know to cross yeah. McElroy as their name and then like and then i looked at you know the the address and it was like hmm that is uh, when i go when i go on his twitter that is you know the area code where he lives and uh, it's yeah it turns out actually him i wow. don't know how he found me but yeah he got he got like a yeah like a decorative role thing i don't know if i'm should even say what he got maybe it's a you know maybe because maybe it's a present for someone or yeah just something. just keep it tight. <laughs> i have but, a question i have a question did you write the note for him like hey i love this did you I do did. that i yes! did <laughs> I did. I couldn't help myself. I had to like be like, oh hey, um, like I appreciate your show and stuff like that. And I hope I just you know hope that he didn't find it super creepy. Um, no, I don't think. Like if, uh, someone, if someone did that to you, wouldn't you just feel flat, 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 flat? <laughs> flatter. I, I would feel so flat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. No, no, yeah. I mean, yeah, probably, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. I, I think it's cool. I would totally have done the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I just had to mention. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's the best thing I've heard in a long time. It's you can great. Imagine, that's you amazing. can imagine my reaction. Oh. I was very excited, and I'm still very excited. I'm very confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like uh, a cosplay friend of ours uh west wing uh she did just some random fan art for a podcast that she loves called turn cloaks it's also a rpg mm. oh, it's, so good. Uh, it's a bit darker and not so much humor no, it's very uh, but she but she did some fan art and posted it on twitter and the people from the cast actually loved it and responded and retweeted uh. and some of her designs ended up on their uh, official merch, which is That's so amazing. cool. Yeah, it's so That's cool. so cool. Wow, I love that. So I, I think that, <laughs> yeah, just to get some recognition and stuff, it's it's awesome. And I think <laughs> I think Travis would love it. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's a sweet guy. Why wouldn't he appreciate that? He's a sweet boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Cisatori is saying uh, that she hasn't been done much because she's been, let's see, she's been home all week, watched Gilmore Girls, watched some TV, lots of random YouTube, Barry Swan Lake, uh, watched The Amazing Spider-Man, really liked it, Kelsen Ellison has a new YouTube Harry Potter series that y'all should check out, also Brissy voices the Tessa netting, no, Brissy... Brissy Voices, it's, it's a YouTube channel, and Tessa mm-hmm. Netting has a cool podcast called Fantastic Geeks and Where to Find Them. Wow. That's You're cool. a liar, Cece. You've been doing a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. he hasn't been really watching much new stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's because she's been home all week, so it's understandable yeah. that. She's been sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poor Bean. Poor Bean. Um. Have I done something else this week? Uh, I feel like I have, but I don't know. So let's just say no. Let's just say no. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no. Um, I watched The Alienist with my hobby on Netflix. We finished that show, and um, I thought it was pretty cool. They're uh, in the Victorian era in London trying to catch a serial killer without really knowing what a serial killer is. Yeah. Ooh. So I, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, I mm-hmm. liked it. I cannot say that it's, you know, it's based on a novel. 
So I don't really know how much of this is plausible or mm. like historically correct or, or and not, but but I was entertained. I liked it. Yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Bye. unless we have something else we want to bring up, I uh I think we have to draw an end for the episode here. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's getting late. Uh, so I would like to say thank you to our wonderful uh, followers for commenting in the chat and for being here and asking questions. And thank you so much to our wonderful guest, Robin, for being here with us. It was very nice. <laughs> thank um, you. Glad you think so. It was a pleasure to have you on. And Thanks for inviting me. You're very welcome. And we will be back next Sunday. Um, also, on Saturday next week, we will be at KazukuCon. We will be judging the cosplay contest. And we will be hosting a cosplay game show thing. Fan mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so if you're going to KazukuCon outside of Lillestrøm, uh, come say hi. Come join our, sh our game show thing. And you could win some nice prizes. Yes. All right. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>